What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Hope you had a great day. Um, Getting into this episode. Julian continues to be a dumb ass fool. Like, fool with a capital F. Just, just fool. Dumb with a capital D. Just, just dumb. Like, he continues to let people blackmail him and get him into more shit. That he cannot get out of. Like, why are they writing Julian into a damn corner all the time? I mean, first you had a, a dagger to Helena's throat. And mind you, it wasn't just any dagger. It was the dagger that Helena used to kill that woman's mother. And you held that same knife to her throat. It don't get no more, no more personal than that. I'm just saying. I was like, damn, Julian. And now you're letting Nell blackmail you. Because Nell told him, she was like, well, I plan on grabbing uh, Wiley, Jonah. She was like, I plan on grabbing Jonah. And he was like, um, you're on parole. She was like, yeah, well, I'm not going to stay away from my son. He was like, well, I'm not helping you. So, of course, she blackmailed him again, talking about, well, I'll just tell Sonny about the fact that you knew Jonah was his grandson. That threat is getting so old. Like, Julian, take the power away from this trick. Why do you keep letting her lead you by the damn nose? Take her power away from her. If you take away her ace, she has no more cards to play with you. You can end this bootleg marriage, stop letting her blackmail you, and just deal with Sonny accordingly. Why? If Julian was smart, which clearly he's, he's obviously not, if you were smart, what you would do is publicly tell the world that you knew Jonah was really Michael's son, Sonny's grandson. That way the public knows. So if Sonny tried to do something to you, he would have a police investigation on his ass. That's the one thing Sonny doesn't need right now, especially with the Cyrus business and what's going on with his dad. The one thing he don't need is a, a police investigation, especially with murder, disappearing, whatever. He don't need that shit right now. So if you were smart, you would handle your business and just publicly out yourself. Take away her power. Take away the power. You ain't got to worry about it. But no, he allows Nell to rule him. So, of course, the whole time they're talking. Um, well, when Julian went to the quarter main mansion to go grab Jonah and he was on the phone with. Nell, Brooklyn was overhearing the conversation. And so Brooklyn confronted Nell and basically told her, well, I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell the police what you're up to. So you already know Nell's not having that. See, what Brooklyn should have did was overhear the conversation, run and go tell her father or somebody. You know what I'm saying? Go tell Sonny, go tell whoever, go tell Michael. Um, That's what you should have did instead of confronting Nell, knowing how crazy that chick is. So, of course, Nell was like, yeah, well, you're not going anywhere. So, of course, she started pulling out scissors, swinging it at her. <laughs> like you in the damn Edward Scissors hand movie part two. Just swinging the damn scissors. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Julian, stupid ass, goes into the mansion and knocks Monica out. You dumb bastard. I can no longer defend Julian because, first of all, you, you put your hands on my lady, and I don't like that, okay? You knocked out the Queen Bee, and that's what we're not going to do. See, I don't play that. You not knocked out Monica. I, I don't play that. You, you're not going to do that. He done knocked her out. I was like, this son of a bitch. Julian, I, he, he's done. I, I can't defend him any longer. I just cannot. I can't. I can't defend you. And Julian was one of my favorites because you know I rooted for the Jeromes. Ava is is just the Jerome. I, 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 you know. Ava, I still rocks with you. But your brother, I don't rock with him at this point in time. I just don't. I don't rock with Julian. Never again. Um, cause that was foul. That was that was just foul. I, I I didn't I didn't approve. And then when he went to Jonah room, I was like, uh, somebody need to stop him. And stop him expeditiously. Stop him now, please. So anyway, moving on from that. Um, Nina and Valentine. Valentine is still trying to woo her back at this point. Nina is sitting there basically still trying to play hard to get. Talking about, well, the ends don't justify the means or whatever. Um, 
And, you know, he told my well, I always wanted what's best for you and, you know, wanted you to have the best and whatnot. Yeah, but you went about it in a shady ass way. And that's just something that's not going to be tolerated. But I feel bad for Jax because I do feel like Jax set himself up for failure because we all know how Nina get down. She could sit there and be mad at Valentine or whatever, but eventually we all know she forgives him and goes back like a fool. Um, and all he's going to do is hurt you again and again and again and again and again, and the cycle will continue. So you got a good man. I mean, granted, Jax is not perfect, but he's a step up from Valentine. I'm just saying, like, at least you can trust him more than you can trust Valentine. You know what I mean? Because when Jax is in a relationship, he's all in. Like, he's committed to you for the most part. Um, <laughs> like, he is. You know, Jax is faithful to 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 a, to a T. You know, I would say he's a good guy. Um, like I said, he's not perfect, but, you know, he's a step up. You know, Valentine did nothing but constantly lie to Nina. That's all he did, you know. But, of course, you know, Valentine did this long-ass performance um, you know how he do. So anyway, he, uh, Martin came up to him talking about some, oh, I want you to make me corporate counsel for ELQ or whatever. So, you know, Martin trying to get his coins at this point. Um, he trying to be general counsel for ELQ and in a surprising turn, which even surprised Michael, Valentin offered Michael the VP position, um, of green initiatives or whatever. And he wanted Michael to join him in creating more success and more money for the company. I was like, oh, I mean, I could see what Valentine's trying to do. One, keep your friends close, keep your enemies even closer. Because remember, Carly kept warning him Michael would get the company back. So, of course, bringing Michael, keeping Michael on in the company is kind of a smart move because you're not only showing you're showing the public the you know, the investors the board members, you're showing everybody that, you know, a quarter main is still a part of the company. You know, the quarter mains are still very much a part of ELQ. Like they all haven't been axed from the company, you know, which is smart. Um, two, you're keeping your eye on Michael because with him working for the company, you could keep, eye, you know, keep tabs on him to see what he up to, who he talking to, what he trying to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's smart. Um, and we all know, remember Tracy did mention that when Michael was CEO of ELQ, he was trying to make the company go green or something like that, which she kind of didn't like. But, you know, Valentin wants to keep up with that spirit and wants to keep that going. So I'm not mad at that. You know, most companies are doing that and they're making a hell of a profit off of it, too. So I can't be mad at that. So, of course, Jax was still pissed about Valentin taking over ELQ or whatever. But Nina was basically just telling him to let it go. Um... She was basically just telling Jack, you know, let it go. There's no need to harp on it. Valentine just needs to, you know, he's trying to prove something to himself. He feels a need to prove something. Um, Jax need to keep his eye on Nina because I got a feeling like this relationship ain't going to last too much longer. I have that feeling. So anyway, Dustin was sitting there apologizing to Lulu or whatever about the kiss that Brooklyn planted on him. And Lulu, of course, was bitching and complaining about how Brooklyn doesn't respect boundaries or whatever. I'm like, Lulu, the girl hates you. Of course, she doesn't respect your boundaries. She doesn't like you. She did that on purpose. Like, Ray Charles, Stevie, uh, Stevie Wonder combined could see that she was trying to steal your man from day one. Like, that was obvious. Um, calling him dusty and out and out flirting with him in front of your face. Like, clearly, she had an agenda. Um, but Lulu sitting there talking about she understands that, you know, uh, she felt abandoned, how Brooklyn, I guess, felt abandoned by her father. First of all, Ned did not abandon her. He did not. Like, just because he kicked the girl out the house, that's not abandonment. She's a grown-ass woman. It ain't like you kicked a child out. You know what I'm saying? Like a little 15-year-old or something. <laughs> like, she's grown. Um, so, of course, Olivia is still pissed at Ned. Um, for turning his back on Brooklyn. And of course, Ned is still po pointing out the fact that she betrayed the family. I'm just going to say this. Ned and Olivia. Oh my God. I could see this pimple. I need to get my cocoa butter. I really do. Damn it. I hate when I get a pimple. I hate it. 
I really do. Because I can see it clear as day right there. Whatever. Um, anyway. I pride myself on having good skin. I'm just saying. You know, you know, uh, a lady today complimented me on good skin. She was like, "You have such beautiful skin." I said, "Well, thank you." She was asking me what lotions and stuff that I use, and you know, stuff that I use. So I gave her a list of stuff that I use. It's not a lot of stuff, but you know, it's just stuff that I use in my daily routine. Um, you know, you got to have a routine. Every everybody has to have one. Um, so anyway, what was I talking about? Yeah, so. You know, I understand where Ned and Olivia are coming from. I get both sides of the coin. I get it. But they need to just let that go. Like, Ned, I feel like eventually he'll, you know, he'll forgive Brooklyn. But I feel like Brooklyn needs to grow up. You know, she needs to stop acting like a spoiled-ass child. Like, you are a grown woman. Put your big girl panties on. Act like a grown woman. You know what I'm saying? Stop getting yourself into these messes and expecting your family to bail you out. Stop huffing and puffing and storming off like a toddler every time you don't get your way. That's not how grown people handle business. That's not how they handle their personal life. Grow up. Please grow up. Like, seriously. Um. So, anyway. Anna was sitting there telling Finn about um, Maxie's pregnancy and she'll think it'd be good for Peter to finally put the past behind him. Anna, hush your mouth. Just bite your tongue. I love me some Anna Devane, but come on now. She has not been acting herself since she came back. She sits there and defends Peter left and right. I'm like, you know he guilty of sin. You know it. Like, stop trying to convince everybody otherwise, because we all know the truth. Um. So, anyway. Moving on from that. Ava was complaining to Nicholas or whatever about Elizabeth giving her the evil eye or whatever. I'm like, Ava need to stop worrying about Nicholas. I mean, stop worrying about Elizabeth. Stop worrying about what people think of you. That's why I said she needs to get out this marriage. Like, you don't need it. Why do you keep putting this stress on yourself? I mean, I know why. Because clearly she wants to punish herself for Kiki. Like, eventually they stop beating Rodney King. Like, you got to move on. Like, you and Kiki just gonna have to work out your differences on the other side. You know what I'm saying? When the time comes. Because, like, you punishing yourself is not doing you any favors. It's not doing Avery any favors. Like, you still have one daughter left. Like, focus on that. Focus on your art gallery. Focus on business. Stop focusing on some bootleg marriage that you know you don't want. So, Nicholas decided to get on stage and make a major announcement that he's donating a million dollars to research and a million dollars to the telethon. So two million dollars total, which I thought was amazing. Um, he also announced that he's uh, establishing an endowment, a scholarship for future nursing students in Elizabeth's name, which I thought was good. But I also felt like he had an ulterior motive. He had an agenda when he did that. And Franco was not happy about it because Franco felt the same way. Like Nicholas had an agenda because he's not happy about Nicholas's interest in his wife. He's not pleased about that. Um, but Nicholas was trying to cover it up, talking about, oh, I was just making a dedication to an old friend. No, you were not. You know what you were doing. You trying to get into that cookie jar, so don't even start. We all know what it is. Um... So, of course, Jax had to play referee. Jax had to get in the middle and thank Nicholas for his generous donation. Um, but, of course, Franco wasn't letting it go. So, him and Nicholas started arguing. Jax, again, had to play referee. Um, if I was Jax, I understand, you know, he didn't want no fighting because, obviously, you're at an event. You're at a charity function. It's for a worthy cause. Nicholas did make a good donation, a very good one. Um, no matter what the agenda was, it was still, you know, pretty nice of him to do. And I mean, normally I would be like, you know, Jax, get out the way and let them let them fight, you know, let them knuckle up. You know what I'm saying? If that's what they want to do. But that was not the time nor the place to be doing that. So I, I do commend Jax for trying to, you know, bring some harmony back to the situation because it is an event. Y'all need to stay classy. Um, <laughs> Y'all need to be classy now. Stay, stay, stay classy. Keep it, keep it class. Um... So anyway, Liz was sitting there eavesdropping on Nina and Ava's conversation. Um, Ava was basically talking about how if Nicholas cheats on her, she gets all his money. I wonder what Liz going to do. I wonder what Liz going to do with that information. I wonder if Liz... 
I hope Liz don't take that information and do something stupid. Because you know the first thing that popped into my head? Because you know Elizabeth kept telling Nicholas to get out that marriage. What if her and Franco get into a really bad argument and she revert back to her old ways of cheating? Because we all know that's not beneath Elizabeth. And what if she messes around and seduces Nicholas just to get him out this marriage? For his own good. What if she does that? I mean, I know some people might think Elizabeth wouldn't do that, but come on now. This is Elizabeth Weber. We are talking about Need I Say More. I do not need to bring up that woman past because if you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. I don't need to tell you because you know it is not beneath her to do such a thing. It is not. Um, I just want to say that. It's not beneath her. I would not put it past her to try and, uh, you know, use her talents to get you know, what she wants. I mean, would she mess up her marriage to do it? I mean, look at what she did with, with Lucky when they were engaged. She was creeping behind his back with his brother. So if she could do that and be engaged doing it, what you think she could do being married? I'm just saying, like, keep it 100. Keep it real. Because that's the only way I can be is keeping it real. Um. So anyway... I believe that's pretty much everything about this episode. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see y'all all tomorrow. Hope you all have a great day. See you all. Hope you have a great night. See you all later. Good night. Peace.